All right, everybody. Uh, this is going to be fuzzing and exploit development with the Metasploit framework. I am Ellie Kara. Uh, also go by Null Threat, as we just said. I'm a senior information security analyst with a company down in Bowling Green. Uh, this is my standard disclaimer. Do not take anything that I say as fact. I have been wrong before, and I will be wrong again. I might be joining this presentation. Uh, first things first. Uh, you guys are going to need some files if you want to replicate this presentation. This is a very complex topic, and if you've never done this before, I highly recommend you not trying to follow along. Watch the whole <laughs> thing through to the end. Download these files, all the files that are right here. The password for that is Metasploit. Um, are all you guys need to uh, replicate this at home. Um, so I'll leave that up for a few minutes, let you guys write that down and or grab the files. Uh, like I said, I, I would not try to do this as I go along because I do talk kind of fast. Um, and if you get behind it all and you've never done this stuff before, you'll get lost. Because I did, like last week, and I was doing it. So, give you guys a minute there. <coughs> While it's going, has anybody ever done uh, exploit development, whether in Metasploit or in any other language, or done fuzzing or anything like that? So one, two, a few. Okay. Yeah, Dave. <laughs> you have that colon there? You what? This colon? Yeah. Yeah. You did that. And the files, uh, when you get it, there'll be two Windows files and two files for you to load into uh, Metasploit, and I'll go through where those files need to be placed as we go along. Uh, there's place that two Ruby files and two executables. Has anybody here ever used a debugger other than the guys that have done this kind of stuff? Okay, good. All right, well, everybody get that that needed it? Leave it up for a minute. All right, I'm going to go ahead. All right, so if we're going to talk about buffer overflows, probably should cover what is an overflow. Uh, the very generic answer, 10,000 foot view, is it's when you put too much stuff in a space that's not designed for that much stuff. Um, there are multiple types of overflows uh, that are exploited. Uh, we're focusing on stack-based overflows because they're easy. Um, for a first overflow, this is one of the easiest out there. Uh, as I said earlier, this came really popular. Uh, Frac 49 Alpha 1's article, uh, Smashing the Stack for Fun and Profit. So what is the stack? Uh, the stack is used, uh, it's part of memory used to hold functions, function variables, user <laughs> inputs, any data the app needs to get to, to repeat, um, it, it stores on the stack. The stack is first in, first out, meaning that when you put whatever goes in from, uh, has to come out. So it's like a box. You put a bunch of stuff in it. If you need the thing out of the bottom, you got to take all the stuff off the top to get to the bottom. Here's a picture. So as you can see here, uh, we have an array of characters, 12 characters, and some other stuff that I'll get into here in a minute. But the big thing is it's waiting for 12 characters. When we put in the word hello with a null terminator, we don't. I, it fits in there just fine. If we send a bunch of A's, for example, you can see we overwrote the other stuff. Now, what is that other stuff? The red one is important, the return address. That's what tells the application what to do. So here you can see we, over, we sent a bunch of A's, and now we've put in something down here. It's kind of hard to see, I know. Um, it's an address in memory, which happens to correspond with this address up here. So when this application processes this information, it would then go here and start reading what we've put in. Does that make sense, everybody? I'm going to stop a lot here and ask if anybody's getting lost, because like I said, if we lose anybody at any point, you're probably going to be lost for the rest of the presentation. Yes? I have a question, though. Will this documentation Yes, it'll be on my website, nullthreat.net. Adrian will have it on his website. I have videos that go along with this and the presentation, and I'm available for questions. So, yes, this will all be out there. And I'll also have the files that I've referred to there will also be available on the website. Okay, so one way that we find out, find these overflows, is through a process called fuzzing. 
Fuzzy and Cooley meet because all you got to do is send a bunch of crap at a program that it's not expecting and wait for it to crash. And this has become a largely automated process here recently where you can set it up, let it go for days, and come back and find all the crashes. Um, basically, the whole goal of fuzzing is to make the application cry. And if we can make it cry the way we want it to, we win. And what we want in this case, EIP, which I'll explain here in a minute, needs to equal 4141 And this is an example of a fuzz string, like HTTP, a get request full of eggs. We're talking like, you can send 10, 20, 20,000, 30,000. If the program's not written to handle that type of information, it'll crash. And if it crashes in the right way, we get control. So, gotta go over a few of the basics. x86 registers. Um, if you see here, EIP is the address in memory. All of these registers point to a location in memory. So, EIP points to the next instruction. That's what tells the application what to do next. And this all makes sense when we get the debugger open and we're running through this a little bit. I'll refer back to this. But this is some of the basics. EIP is the next instruction. ESP is the uh, stack pointer. It points to the top of the stack. Uh, the rest of it just kind of holds addresses and things for uh, functions in the application. And there's the full list of what each of them means. Uh, not really relevant right this, at this point. Um, so let's break something. This is, a, this is a pretty uh, demo intensive. Uh, I did have videos, because I hate doing live demos, but you can't see them. So I'm going to try to do live demos. So we're going to start with that exploit. What was that tweet you sent out about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> right? Comma. All right. Uh, give me just a minute here. All right, um, there are some fuzzers built in to Metasploit. Um, I actually don't use Metasploit for doing a lot of my fuzzing. There are a lot of other applications that do it better, but in a pinch, you can use Metasploit. Uh, the ones that I prefer are uh, on Windows. Sully <coughs> is great um, because it will actually restart the program for you if it crashes. It's got some uh, really, really neat stuff. Uh, that, that's a whole other hour-long demo on Sully. Um, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube about it if you look it up. And uh, Spike, which is the one that's built into Backtrack, and it's kind of the old reliable. Um, there, the one that we're going to look at is actually not going to be included in yours, but it's in those files that I had you guys download, which is the TFTP one. This is where you replace it. Do you guys see that in the hall? Yeah. Okay, so pen test exploits, uh, framework three, modules, auxiliary, fuzzers. If you go into, if you go into settings, you can zoom in. Oh yeah. Go to settings. Uh, no, no, no. Font. And then enlarge font. Just do it a couple times. Is that better? One more. Yeah, it's the colors. That you see. Yeah. <laughs> How do you turn that off? Bigger so, on all right, so you've got your, uh, there's the path that you need to place that file, and I'll show you. There it is in the path. This is a very, very, very basic fuzzer. Um, inside here, it's, uh, I took one of the other fuzzers that was included and just modified it for my purposes because I'm not very good at writing my own code, but I can definitely steal other people's codes and make it fit my needs. Um, basically, it's, uh, you call the libraries you need, you give it a name, version, description, uh, author. Basically, the important stuff with this is we're going to be fuzzing TFTP. So we set the port to 69. We say that it's UDP, because it is. And then we start the actual fuzzing uh, setup there. Basically, I've set a count. The initial count is it's going to send 100 uh, A's. While it's less than 2,000, send 1,000 A's. I uh, here, this uh, right to here, I pulled that from the RFC. Um, so if you just go out, you can look up TFTP, you can see how the packets have to be structured. Um, so I just pulled that from there. It prints some status information, then it increases the counter by 50 and runs it again. So now, go over my Windows box.